right now is Kentucky Congressman James Comer. He is the ranking member of the Oversight Committee and a member of the Education and Labor Committees. Congressman, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, it's just, it's so ridiculous. They come out with the disinformation board, uh, met with massive pushback from everybody, pretty much, because we all are Americans and understand the First Amendment. Uh, your reaction? Well, this was a failed attempt by the Biden administration to politicize the Department of Homeland Security for political reasons. And this is a rare win for the Republicans pushing back against the, the Biden agenda. Uh, the Republicans, along with uh, great people like you, Maria, and the conservative media that uh, made sure the American people knew how ridiculous this disinformation board was. The job of Homeland Security needs to be to protect our homeland, to secure the border. And what we see now in the Biden administration is an open border policy that's putting Americans' lives at risk, that's increasing the drug trade, increasing human trafficking, and it's just a huge burden on the taxpayers. So the last thing we need to do is spend taxpayer dollars on some type of disinformation board so the Biden administration can try to spin that they're somehow doing a good job on the border when I think the American people know uh, that they're not. Well, maybe they wanted to call Hunter Biden's influence peddling disinformation uh, until they were stopped. Right. Uh, Biden's Justice Department has now cleared the lobbying firm Blue Star Strategies of any wrongdoing after it worked uh, on the controversial Ukrainian energy company Burisma. Hunter Biden was on the board of Burisma at the time, getting tens of thousands of dollars uh, for uh, every year. If the GOP takes back the House, they've laid out plans to investigate Hunter and his business dealings in, in, in China and in Ukraine. As Biden says, his administration is considering dropping tariffs on China. A lot to talk about this morning, Congressman. First of all, I want to point your attention to an op-ed in the New York Post today by Miranda Devine. She says justice is coming for the Dirty 51. She's referring the Dirty 51 to the 51 intelligence uh, officials who signed that letter right before the 2020 election to mislead us, to tell us that the Hunter Biden laptop was disinformation, Congressman. Your thoughts? Yeah, well, the, I think justice will come. Uh, they're going to be given an opportunity to come before numerous committees of jurisdiction uh, from Republicans when we retake the majority of the House next year. So uh, they're going to have an opportunity to explain themselves and, and uh, explain the huge disservice they did to the American voters when they're trying to sort out uh, all the the misinformation that the mainstream media was trying to portray about the Bidens and their business dealings. I think we all know that Hunter Biden is a national security threat. And I can tell you right now, even though we're still in the minority, the Republicans on the House Oversight Committee continue to investigate and probe Hunter Biden. In fact, next week, I think we're going to release some more information that not only shows more wrongdoing by Hunter Biden, but it also shows a probable cover-up by the Biden administration. So this Hunter Biden problem is not going to go away. Uh, but uh, to reference your earlier question, what a shame that former intelligence officials would come and, and try to uh, put their names on the line and their reputations on the line to say there's no problem yeah. here with Hunter Biden. Everything's fine. This is fake news. Yeah, I mean, they use their roles as intelligence right. officials, their former roles, as some kind of credibility that we're supposed right. to listen to uh, simply because they wanted to defeat Trump. Uh, but, but I want to get to this issue of influence peddling and, and ask the question of whether that is dictating President Biden's decision. I mean, a couple of things. I know you all are working on a China policy uh, right, right now, and you've got the Federal Retirement Thrift Investment Board, the 401K plan for government employees, uh, including military men and women, by the way, they are going to open up a window next month in June so that this fund can invest in Chinese companies. These include companies that are tied to the CCP. It even includes companies that have already been sanctioned. Uh, is this going to happen, do you think? I've got the news right here, this government agency that oversees the retirement fund for 6 million federal government employees is poised to allow investments in Chinese firms linked to the Chinese Communist Party. So take that on, as well as the question of tariffs. I know that from day one, when Joe Biden walked into the Oval Office, the CCP has been asking to, to remove the tariffs on Chinese goods. Is Biden going to do that? And does this have anything to do with all the money his family has taken in from Chinese officials? 
Well, that's the million dollar question. And I think you're going to see a, a lot of pushback from Republicans on Capitol Hill uh, against the dr drastic change in China policy from where the Trump administration was to where the Biden administration wants to be. Uh, it just makes you think uh, with confidence that this administration's compromised. It's compromised. You know, why didn't they want to investigate the origination of COVID-19 in the Wuhan lab? Why do they want to end all tariffs? Why do they want to invest Americans uh, savings in communist Chinese companies that don't play by the rules, that manipulate their currency, that steal our intellectual property and our patents. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, and it would. It always leads back to Hunter. It always makes one wonder, is this administration compromised? And I think you're going to see more and more information trickle out about Hunter Biden, and now you're going to see more and more decisions made by the Biden administration that would lead one to believe that Joe Biden is, in fact, compromised by Hunter Biden's shady business dealings. So you're going to release what next week, Congressman? Well, we've got uh, Hunter Biden's financial records. We have the hard drive. We've been pouring over that hard drive. And I can tell you, he's had a lot of violations that I don't think the average person uh, would have been able to have gotten away with. Uh, the banks that, that he uh, dealt with, uh, many of them are publicly traded, brand name banks that uh, you're very familiar with, Maria, any investor would be very familiar with. And, and the question is, why was he allowed to continue to bank with these banks? I mean, I don't think any American has had as many violations as, as Hunter Biden's had just with his banking accounts. And, and we're going to go into detail wow. on that. And we're going to talk about what Joe Biden did to change American policy with respect to some of these violations. You know, it all points back to Hunter Biden. And I think that this is a problem that that's not going to go away. And the Democrats are starting to realize that here in Washington. Well, we got to jump, Congressman, real quick. Is he going to remove the tariffs on Chinese goods? Well, he hasn't consulted with Congress on that. I'm sure that comes as no surprise to you. But I think that uh, any change in policy from the Trump administration with respect to China would be a huge mistake for Joe Biden. All right, Congressman, great to see you. We'll be waiting for your breaking news next week. Thanks for joining us this morning. Congressman James Comer me. joining us. We're